Our next unit in Psych 215 is a unit on transformed scores. So let's talk a little bit about those. Sometimes the form of the scores in a sample or population are inconvenient. Um, they're ugly, they're messy, they're um, you, you know not really uh, usable, if you will. And by transforming them, they become a little easier to work with. Or by transforming them, we arrive at a more commonly used measure. Now these uh, transformations are only appropriate for interval or ratio level data, interval or ratio level measurements that is. Um, if you forget what interval and ratio level measurements mean, maybe it's probably not a bad idea to go back to chapter one in the textbook and uh, review the four scales, uh, the four levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Okay. For example, let's say that uh, we measured something and our scores were something like this, 0 .00003, 0 .00005, and so on. Um, these scores are going to be hard to work with. Um, you might misplace the decimal place. You might add another zero. Um, they're just ugly to work with, if you will. But if we were to multiply every one of those scores by 100,000, <clears> we would we would wind up with transform scores of 35973116 and those are much easier to work with. <clears throat> here's another example where we have some pretty ugly scores. We've measured something and here's what we get. If we multiply by 100,000 we get 91441636929 and 25. And if you notice that in both cases what we've done is we've just taken x scores our, our scores are what we call x and transform them. So I'm using the notation x sub trans to refer to the transformed x's. We could go even further in this second example and take the square root. So if we were to take the square root of 9, of 1, of 4, of 4, of 16, we would wind up with a new transformation 31224635. In other words, We've now converted, or we've now made our transformation the square root of 100,000 times x. Another example here is uh, what if we had scores something like 103, 403, 1,003, 603. If we were to subtract 3 from everything, we wind up with, you know, sort of easier uh, uh, scores. Uh, trans the, trans the first transformation here winds up, we wind up with... Uh, scores that are all divisible by 100. And if we then divide by 100, then we wind up with much easier scores to work with. And in this case, our transformation would be x minus 3 divided by 100. I want you to look at this uh, particular transformation, and you'll note that what we have is we have a variable that's the transform score, and then the actual score, which is a variable, and then two constants. We're just subtracting one constant and we're dividing by one constant. Now, when we do this, if we were to do this process, we could take a transform score 1, just, just to be clear, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. You could go from 1, if, the tra if I told you the transform score was 1, you could multiply that by 100 and add 3 to arrive back at the original score. So when we talk about these transformations, we're talking about a linear uh, transformation that you can go back and forth with. We're not manipulating the data, we're not changing the, the, uh, the underlying scores. We are transforming them to a more convenient measure. We can go backwards. If, For example, if I told you the transform score was, was 7 following this transformation, we could multiply by 100 to arrive at 700 and add 3 to arrive at 703. So this is not playing with the data or manipulating the data. It is just transforming the data so that we have a more convenient measure or a more, uh, a more uh, uh, commonly used measure um, in psychological research. Okay. <clears throat> I've, I've just changed this formula real quickly to um, reflect that one popular transformation is to subtract a constant from a score and divide by a constant. Are there other constants that we could consider using here? Um, how about the mean or how about the standard deviation? 
when considering them in the current context, they are constants. In other words, what I'm saying is, is that when while individual scores may vary from one observation to the next, the mean and the standard deviation of a particular sample, sample or population always stay the same. In the in the when when talking about transformations, the mean and the standard deviation of a sample are considered to be constants. Now. That leads us to a special form of transformation. The reason I've introduced mean and standard deviation is because when we use the mean and the standard deviation in transforming scores, we arrive at something we have a special name for. We call it a z-score. These are scores that result from linear transformations of original scores to a more commonly used standard form. And it's computed by subtracting the mean from every score and dividing by the standard deviation. In other words, a z-score is the number of standard deviations an observation is from the mean of that distribution. Here are the two formula for computing z-scores. If you're dealing with a population, then you're going to be using the population parameters. Mu, which is population mean. Sigma, which is population standard deviation. If you're dealing with a sample, you're going to use this formula, which is nearly identical. You're going to use the unbiased estimates of... <clears throat> of the central tendency M and the unbiased estimate of, uh, of variance or standard deviation S. Okay, so for example, if we had a score of 400 uh, taken from a population whose mean was 500 and whose standard deviation was 100, what is the Z of that particular score? And here I've done the very simple computation where I've taken X, our score 400 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation to arrive at a Z at to arrive at a Z of negative one. In other words, the score of 400 is minus one standard deviations from the mean. Now, what is the usefulness of this? Well, first of all, it's a commonly Z scores are commonly used measures. They're often used in psychological research. This is often a way to look. At, uh, at particular uh, variables um, to do a z-transformation, but we can also compare uh, z-scores. So for example, if Joe has a measured IQ of 105 and received a 700 on the SAT verbal, how do these scores compare? I mean, both of these measures, IQ and SAT verbal, are sort of measures of intelligence, right, or, or ability. We could see that. Are they comparable? How do they compare? So we could compare them we know that IQ scores have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. We know that SAT scores have a mean of 500 and, and a standard deviation of 100. So if we were to do the transformations, the Z of his IQ is 0.333. The Z of the, his SAT verbal is 2. And what this suggests is that Joe's SAT performance was better than would be expected by his general intellectual ability. In other words, we probably expect Joe to perform on SAT about where he would perform on an IQ test. We, we think that these, if these are both measures of intelligence, um, that they should be roughly the same, and they're not. He's two standard deviations above the mean uh, in terms of his SAT verbal score, but only a third of the standard deviation above the mean in terms of his IQ. We can also go backwards. Let's say Joe's, let's say we were told that the Z of Joe's ACT score was 1.25. We might want to know, well, what was his score? I mean, SAT scores are given to you either in percentiles or in, uh, in the actual scores. Um, what, what is that score? That might be a useful piece of information. If we look at the formula for the Z, take the score minus mean divided by the standard deviation. If we do a little algebra, and move the sigma over to this side, we get z sigma equals x minus mu. And if we move the mu over to the other side, we get z sigma plus mu equals x. If we reorganize that a little bit further, we say the x is equal to mu plus z times sigma. So what I've done here is transfer that formula over here. If Joe's, uh, uh, we want to know Joe's raw score, we know that his z score was 1.25. We get 21 plus 1.25 times 5, which is the standard deviation, and we find that Joe's ECT score is 27.25. Okay, so that's it for uh, uh, an introduction to transform scores. What we're going to do next is talk a little bit about distributions of transform scores.
which is the next video you should watch. Talk to you soon.